stage 40, you may, you may be seated. Thank you. Good afternoon. I would like to welcome you to the Medical College of Wisconsin School of Pharmacy Pudding Ceremony in person. <laughs> My name is... <laughs> My name is Abir El Alfi, Assistant Dean for Student Affairs for the School of Pharmacy, and I will serve as Master of Ceremony for you today. As a reminder, please turn off or silence your cell phones, and we ask that you refrain from any flash photography. Graduates will be moving through the aisles during the ceremony, so please remain in your seats and out of the aisle. I would like to take a moment to thank the members of the amazing administrative team at the School of Pharmacy. Without their contribution to this event and the work they do for all our students and faculty, we would not be here in this moment. Please give them a round of applause. <laughs> Dear graduates, congratulations. You made it. Three years have flown by way too fast. We are joined today by your family and friends who have supported you over the past three years of your pharmacy journey. They are an essential part of your success. Let's give them a round of applause. We are excited to welcome all members of the MCW community to our hooding ceremony today. Additionally, I would like to thank our colleagues at Fredert Hospital, Children's Wisconsin, and the Clement Zablocki VA, as well as members of the healthcare community who are in attendance from our partners across Southeast Wisconsin, including our pharmacy preceptors, corporate partners, and academic partners. Now, I would like to introduce Dr. George McKinnon, founding dean of the MCW School of I like that introduction as well. <laughs> Hello, family, friends, guests, faculty, colleagues, and soon-to-be graduates. Yes, I'm Dr. George E. McKinnon. I'm the founding dean of the School of Pharmacy at the Medical College of Wisconsin. And to all attending this doctoral hood and ceremony today, I sincerely hope that you and your families have remained safe during the past two years of this pandemic. We are all delighted to be here in person, as we've said before, for this wonderful event with our family. And to our graduates, today, May 19th, 2022, represents the culmination of years of hard work, dedication, sacrifices, late nights and early mornings, and yes, tenacity from all of you in pursuit of your doctor of pharmacy degree, your PharmD degree. You have all persevered and exhibited resiliency in this pandemic to achieve your PharmD degree in unprecedented times over a three-year period, unlike others. These traits will serve you well as a pharmacist in the future, and yes, as a healthcare provider. It's hard to recall what's transpired in these past three years with you. Most recently, words and phrases that have now become part of our lexicon are virtual, hybrid, Zoom, Teams, video, no video, you're on mute, pivot, reimagine, new normal, and yes, telehealth and telepharmacy. The latter two will remain for some times in your careers yet to come. Sadly, when you joined us, our country was in the middle of an opiate crisis, and we still are. It is shrouded by ongoing events and catastrophic events as well. The pandemic exposed numerous shortcomings in our healthcare system and inequities. Make no mistake, these and other events will impact you personally and professionally. Yet, you and your pharmacy profession have always and will continue to serve society admirably. Today, approximately 43% of the 580 million COVID vaccinations administered in the United States have been through the oversight and engagement of the pharmacy profession. I could not imagine where our country would be without our pharmacists. As I've said, there are two types of people, those who run to put out fires and those that don't. This has been the time for our healthcare professionals, our firefighters, including student pharmacists, assist in putting out these pandemic fires by providing COVID-19 shots. Thank you. On our campus here in Milwaukee, 
The Medical College of Wisconsin School of Pharmacy led efforts, along with our Office of Research, to set up an operational COVID-19 immunization clinic that began immunizations in late December 2020. We were able to achieve 100% participation from our faculty and staff, as well as our student pharmacists from the School of Pharmacy, contributing over 4,500 hours and 45 days of clinic operations, providing almost 20,000 immunizations to 10,000 people. Thank you to those of you that participated in these efforts on campus, and importantly, at your clinical rotation sites and volunteering at other locations. So why were we successful? Why? Well, there's no simple answer to that. I do believe that it lies in that we were prepared and how we educate our student pharmacists, as well as advocating for our profession. As exemplified in the words of Aristotle, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. What are your habits to be ready for the next catastrophic events or simply the next patient that you see as a pharmacist? Again, pending your board licensures. I'm confident that the traits you have honed here at the Medical College of Wisconsin School of Pharmacy in your formal education in the acquisition of knowledge, skills, and abilities will serve you well as you embark upon your professional careers. Where that may take each of you on your journeys is yet to be known. Yet remember, it's the soft skills of attitudes and behaviors that one takes into practice that will reflect upon you and your professional colleagues. To use a former U.S. Army recruiting slogan, be all you can be, let me improvise this with, be the best you can be to all. Thus, moving forward, you must advocate for team-based approaches to healthcare, always challenging the status quo of regulatory and professional positions when advocating for patients' welfare and other healthcare members. We and you helped in many ways to support legislation that changed how we go about training and supervising student pharmacists in immunizations that was accomplished in February of 2021 but the battle was drawn up in 2015 by our inaugural faculty as we needed to change Wisconsin statutes to allow us to provide education and training to our PharmD students as we saw fit, not bound by bureaucracy. We also pa saw passage Act 98 most recently December by Governor Everters that now recognizes pharmacists as non-physician providers under state Medicaid. Wisconsin's now the eighth state to do so. That puts us in, again, august company. This legislation will now allow our most vulnerable patients and underserved communities access to healthcare services provided by pharmacists who are one of the most accessible healthcare providers in our communities. The good thing is that many others have noticed. Let me read in part an email that I just received in March from the Milwaukee Health Department. Quote, with the recent announcement during the State of the Union address by President Biden about the test to treat protocol for Paxlovid and COVID antiviral, I got to thinking about the role's expanded scope of practice for pharmacists which I believe is part of MCW's pharmacy curriculum is building. I believe there are huge opportunities to equitably roll out test to treat paradigm here in Milwaukee with the right implementation plan and the right partners. Since Paxlovid does not benefit from emergency youth authorization, UA, it must be prescribed by a physician, which could severely limit the ability of community pharmacists to independently implement the test to treat protocol. However, I know Wisconsin passed legislation for pharmacists to be non-physician providers with Medicaid. Maybe there's a way forward. Would love to hear your thoughts. That comes from a non-clinician. That comes from somebody in the Milwaukee Health Department reaching out. So I, as I said most recently at the fireside chat this past week in the celebration of teaching and learning, don't take no from someone who's not empowered to tell you yes. Work with the naysayers, understand the issues, and rally around to gain supporters. When we established the School of Pharmacy in 2015, we set out to develop and deliver an innovative pharmacy curriculum to produce graduates that embody our vision as pharmacists of the future, yet ready for practice today. I subscribe that we have indeed delivered on this promise, as exemplified with you in your 93% placement rate for postgraduate residencies and success in your director career placements this coming year. For example, here's an email that I was CC'd on by one of our former graduates that took the director career path placement in hospital practice. Quote, I just treated a patient for severe malaria. As a new grad, third shift pharmacist working alone in a small hospital, I would have been, in, I've been completely out of my element and had not been for your travel medicine IPI rotation. I assured the hospitalists I would contact the CDC and yes, the drug manufacturer, as it turns out, and procure the necessary treatment. Thanks for sharing your expertise and passion for ID travel medicine with students at all levels. Not only does your work impact your own patients, but it improves the outcomes of your student patients. Thank you, Dr. Bennell, for your leadership in this area. And now, I am so delighted to introduce a pillar of our academic pharmacy community for the past 20 years as our keynote speaker. 
Her brief bio is in the program for you. Dr. Lucinda L. Main serves as Executive Vice President and CEO of the American Association of Colleges of Pharmacy, or AACP. AACP works to develop strong academic scholars and leaders to support excellent professional doctoral and postgraduate degree programs and to build excellent uh, constituents with inside pharmacy and external to pharmacy. Under her tenure, the past 20 years, she has overseen the academy double in the number of pharmacy programs and graduates entered a profession. Her work has not gone unnoticed, as Dr. Main has been the recipient of several honors and recognitions throughout her career. Most recently, she received the Remington Honor Medal, the profession's highest honor presented annually at the American Pharmacy Association meeting, where she previously served as Senior Vice President for Policy, Planning, and Communications before leaving AACP. Yet, having known and worked with and for Lucinda all these years, I know some of her greatest recognitions and titles include spouse, mother, pharmacist, colleague, and friend. Truth be told, this invitation has been over three years in the making and survived two years of the pandemic. We are so delighted to have her with us here today as she wraps up an illustrious career in a short six weeks with AACP. Please join me in welcome, Dr. Main. Thank you, George. And one of my newest titles is pastor's wife, if you can believe that. A pharmacist turned pastor. You never know what might happen to you in your years ahead. Dean McKinnon, distinguished faculty, family and guests, and especially the members of the class of 2022, I do thank you for inviting me and inviting me and inviting me <laughs> to participate in this ceremony for the PharmD class of 2022 as you complete this portion of your journey into the profession of pharmacy. I feel like saying third time's the charm, as we did have that pandemic interruption in plans for me to participate in 2020 and again in 2021. I believe this may actually be my first visit to Milwaukee, either ever or in a very long time, and I'm really excited to be here with you. While yours might be a new college of pharmacy, I have known Dean McKinnon for quite some time. Uh, in fact, he was part of the senior staff of AACP back in 2006 for several years. What stands out vividly for me when I think about each pharmacy program where he served in a top leadership role, the program has created some extraordinary leaders prepared to make a significant impact on our profession in an era of change. It's that energy for positive change in the profession that I want to focus on today in my brief remarks. We need strong new leaders as this class transitions from students to early career practitioners. There's a concept related to the implementation of information technology, as well as getting products and services to the ultimate consumer that I've heard referred to as the last mile. Interpreting this for the evolution of pharmacists consistently providing important patient care services to those needing that care the last mile refers to the movement of goods or services to the consumer or your patient. This may include using the latest technologies, perhaps pharmacogenomics and or digital therapeutics, while managing the complexity and cost with the increasingly demanding requirements of faster deliveries and tighter delivery windows. Quite the challenging scenario. The last mile is, in fact, the toughest portion of the development and implementation of many things, including the transformation of our profession from a primary focus on moving drug products safely and efficiently through the supply chain to positioning you, our graduates and alumni, as an indispensable member of an interprofessional care team that produces improved individual and community health. That team desperately needs your expertise and skills to achieve the very best outcomes for the people whose care you have and will be entrusted to provide. I like to say that pharmacists, and especially our faculty members, are noted as leaders in team-based care movement because we know that quality medication management is in fact a team sport. We simply want and need others to know that we are willing and ready to play our important roles on those teams. In 2024, just two short years from now, 
I will celebrate the fact that 50 amazing years ago, I entered the profession as a pre-pharmacy student at Auburn University. I'm sure that 50 years sounds like a very long time to you graduates. It's most likely approximately twice your lifetime. As I reflect on how our profession has changed across these five decades, I'm quite uplifted by the fact that there has been so much progress. Just a very few years before I started college, the profession's code of ethics proclaimed that it was actually unethical for a pharmacist to tell patrons anything about their medications, even the name of the drug product. Fortunately, in the 1970s, the tide turned dramatically and the code affirmed pharmacists' responsibility to share their knowledge with patients and other clinicians. And the current code of ethics from 1994 goes even farther. It speaks of the covenant of trust between pharmacists and patients and your work to help those in your care achieve the best state of health possible. This evolution of pharmacist responsibility is reflected in the current code, as well in the, as the new oath of the pharmacist, which we'll recite later in this program, has kept pace with a continuous increase in the power and complexity of the medications and biologics that researchers and their discoveries have introduced into our healthcare system in the last 40 to 50 years. The past two years underscore this remarkable progress with the rapid development of vaccines and therapeutics aimed at taming the scourge brought on by the novel coronavirus and the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, the dean used the, uh, the number 43%. I've heard some estimates that pharmacy personnel may have administered 70% or more of all COVID vaccines over the last 15 to 16 months. It's kind of hard to count them all accurately and precisely. Pharmacists and ICUs and emergency departments played enormously important roles finding solutions to address the acute needs of those hospitalized with serious life-threatening conditions, often in the face of shortages of much-needed medications and supplies. Under emergency authorization from state and federal officials, the scope of practice for pharmacists, student pharmacists, and pharmacy technicians expanded significantly. And no one could overlook the major contributions our profession made as the most accessible professionals in our communities. This is especially true in medically underserved and often rural areas where a pharmacy and a pharmacist may be the only access point for care for people with transportation issues and limited means. It's my fervent hope that how pharmacists responded to the COVID challenge has made our last mile to full recognition as essential members of the healthcare system somewhat easier to navigate. There are a few important considerations to share with you and others attending today's ceremony. First, there must be a commitment to continue the intense collaborations among our profession's organizations at the state and national level. In my 30 years of association leadership, I've never seen the level of collaboration among these organizations that has been sustained throughout the pandemic. It's been beautiful, uplifting, and it's worked. Continuing this commitment will help us complete that last mile. Colleges and schools of pharmacy, their faculty, and their students must be part of these collaborations, and I know that it's a core value of MCW College of Pharmacy. Equally important is attending to the well-being of our workforce. After more than two years navigating the pandemic, people are simply tired. Pharmacists, pharmacy technicians, and other personnel have given their all and Zoom happy hours and pizza lunches simply aren't the answer to reestablishing the energy and enthusiasm for practice across all settings. Pharmacists' employers, policymakers, and members of the public all must play a role in increasing the health and well being of the pharmacy workforce. We must care for the caregivers. Class of 2022, you have significant roles to play in reaching the end of this last mile. You have been supremely well educated and have been exposed to exciting practice and leadership opportunities. It may take you a few years to translate your clinical education into the practices you dream of, but never lose sight of the importance of your contributions to achieving the quadruple aim for our healthcare system, better patient outcomes, improved population health, lower total costs of care, and a health workforce that's healthier and stronger because of the contributions you will make to the team. 
I wish you the very best in your next 50 years. Imagine the process will, uh, the progress that we'll be able to reflect upon in 70, uh, 2072. Thank you for your warm welcome and including me in today's important events. Thank you, Dr. Main, for those inspiring remarks. And now, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. It is time for the class of 2022 to receive their academic hoods. Our graduates have selected several faculty representatives to assist with hooding. I would please ask Dr. McKinnon and Drs. Foster and Dr. Assam to please take your position on the stage. We ask that you please hold your applause until all students have been hooded. Thank you. Gillian Allen. Alyssa M. Ryan. Ghadir Asad. Alyssa M. Ryan. Ghadir Asad. Alexis Bartels. Kyle Braithwaite. Hannah Patrice Gilbert. <laughs> Connor Grant <laughs> Selena Ho Michael Keeney. Sean Laboda. Kurtia Asia Lee. Andres Maldonado Rodriguez. Haley McDaniel. Samuel Mickels. Andrea Modlin.
Emily Munich. Danny O'Lurkey. Olivia Oshelsky. Rawan Ouda. Jake Padgett. Amber Pat Thank you Drs. Foster and Assem. Take your seats please and I would ask Dr. Scavena and Dr. Pape to take your position on the stage. Lay Pham Michael Piccolo Mohammad Rifai Jose Roy Jose Roque Andres Saavedra. Danielle Schuyler. Haley Sido <laughs> Ayushma Sharma Justin Sorensen Melissa Staffen Petra Stevanovich Jackson Strong Crystal Vanden Bloomer
Denai Vila Velasquez. Brianna Wallace. Kelly Wessel. Hugh Shong. Tarek Yusuf. Tracy Zook. Thank you, Dr. Skavana and Dr. Pape. You may take your seats. Now let's give our graduates a big round of applause. And now I'd like to uh, invite uh, Dr. Justin Conkle uh, here to lead you in the oath of a pharmacist. Dr. Conkle serves as our uh, assistant professor of clinical pharmacy, as well as director of Frederick Pharmacy Operations, and currently is the interim chief pharmacy officer. So, Dr. Conkle. It is my honor today to review the oath of a pharmacist with you. So, I'd like to ask you to stand. The class, at least, excuse me, the class. Everybody else can sit. Um, and if you are a pharmacist in the room, maybe there are a couple of you'd like to stand with us, fellow. So there's usually a couple of, a couple of family members in the room that are pharmacists. Love to see it. So class of 22, please raise your right hand. And then we're going to, I'll read it, and then you'll repeat after me is how we'll do this today. I promise to devote myself to a lifetime of service to others through the profession of pharmacy. In fulfilling this vow, I will consider the welfare of humanity and relief of suffering my primary concerns. I will promote inclusion embrace diversity, and advocate for justice to advanced health equity. I will apply my knowledge, experience, and skills to the best of my ability to assure optimal outcomes for all patients. I will respect and protect all personal and health information entrusted to me. I will accept the responsibility to improve my professional knowledge, expertise, and self-awareness. I will hold myself and my colleagues to the highest principles of our profession's moral, ethical, and legal conduct. I will embrace and advocate changes that improve patient care. I will utilize my knowledge, skills, experiences, and values to prepare the next generation of pharmacists.
I take these vows voluntarily with the full realization of the responsibility with which I'm entrusted by the public. Congratulations, class of 2022. You guys can go ahead and take your seats. I wanted to share just a couple brief remarks. I know Dean McKinnon talked about, again, you guys have been through uh, a journey of the last three years, and right now you're the special class that made it through. But I think just in a couple uh, words of advice and words of thought is that Let's think about what's gonna make you special in 10 years. What's your legacy? Let's not be remembered as the class that battled through virtual, hybrid, Zoom, Teams, go to meeting. what am I missing? WebEx, uh, Facebook Messenger, right? But really think about what, I'm gonna to look to you guys in 10 years and we're not gonna remember you as the class that was the pandemic class. We're gonna remember you for what? Eradicating COVID, communicable diseases, improving patient care, revolutionizing the practice of pharmacy. That, that is what I challenge all of you to make you special about what you're able to and about what you're going to do in your next journey. So congratulations, have fun, have a great night, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Conkle. Obviously, you're a little bit taller than me because the mic is pretty much at eye level. So I uh, just uh, realized that because when you're on Zoom and all these other things, you don't really realize the height of a person. And so uh, remind me to get you on my next pickup basketball game. Um, so here, as we conclude to this transitional yet symbolic ceremony, I want to share a few principles to consider as you go forth, blazing your careers and paths in pharmacy, as Dr. Conkle alluded to. What do you want to be known for? whether it be a direct career placement or postgraduate training. So as you engage with caregivers and others, please consider these principles. Continue to learn. You are doctorally trained and know more about medications than any other healthcare professional. Yet new knowledge is not stagnant, and you need to remain informed of new emergent therapies to be effective in your pa in, to your patients. Hone your skills and add new ones. Don't let them atrophy. Engage. Bring an attitude of engagement and collaboration to all that you do. Success, and yes, even failures, are meant to be shared with one another, yet learn from. Innovate. Be inquisitive and willing to learn. Get outside your comfort zone and try new approaches to deliver high-quality patient care. I have found that successful individuals more often say yes than no when asked. And advocate, advocate. The future of your practice is now. Don't expect others to change it to you, for you, frankly, for the better. Inaction and silence are not options, and hopefully you've heard that from me throughout the years. So in closing, remember that success is not measured in hours worked, prescriptions filled, but rather in the lives touched, impacted daily. You are and always will be part of the MCW family, but also the School of Pharmacy, Pharmacy. Thank you again for the privilege to have served as your founding dean of the MCW School of Pharmacy. No, I need this way lower. <laughs> uh, thank you, Dean McKinnon, and thank you all for coming. Congratulations, class of 2022. You made it, and we couldn't be more proud of you. Thank you. So this concludes our hooding. Graduates, please stay seated. You will have photos taken with the dean. Stage party, you can now proceed and exit out of the hall. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks.
careful. 